In the last video, what we did is we developed this model of how charges move through these wires by zooming in on the wires and looking at how they collide with atomic cores, right? So this is that picture where the electrons are coming in, they're running into these atomic cores um, as they move along. In that video, we developed a mathematical model for the average velocity associated with those particles as they move along, which is related to the charge that they have, the average time between collisions, the mass of the particles, and the electric field. What we're going to do in this video is relate this to some macroscopic quantities that we can actually measure in the laboratory. So this guy here is a constant in the sense that once you know what the charge carriers are, they have a given charge, they have a given mass, and there's an average time between collisions that um, we can't measure, but this quantity we can measure for different kinds of objects. Um, we're going to give it the symbol U, and it is the electron mobility. It tells us, in a sense, how mobile the electrons are. That is, how free to move through the material they are. And we talked a little, we can talk a little bit about the scaling of that, right? As those charge carriers have more charge, they move more quickly, so they're more mobile. The more mass they have, um, the harder they are to move, right? So they're less mobile. And if the average time between collisions is long, they're more mobile. That is, they can get farther along before running into stuff. So this kind of makes sense in thinking about how we might relate the average velocity to the electric field. Now what we notice then is that there's some coefficient out front associated with the materials and the, and the charge carriers that we have, um, but that this average velocity is directly related to the electric field that is the result of the surface charge gradient. Right? So the bigger that surface charge gradient, the bigger the electric field, and therefore the, the larger the average velocity. Now in a previous video what we did is we talked a little bit about this thing that we call the electron current, which is the amount of electrons passing a point per unit time. We gave it the symbol I, and we said that it was related to the number density, that is the number of charge carriers that are available to move, the cross-sectional area of the wire, that is how big it is uh, when you're looking at it like a tube, and the average velocity. So this tells us that, given our model that we've developed, that the electron current is associated with the number density of those charges, the cross-sectional area, the electron mobility, and the electric field that is applied as a result of the surface charge gradient. All this stuff fits together in a really nice way because it says that we expect more electrons per unit time when we have more available to move around, when the wire is bigger, fatter, when we have more mobile electrons, and when the electric field that's applied is larger. All those things seem to fit with our intuition that we would get more electrons moving per unit time. Now, the thing that comes out of the wall, right, the thing that you can actually measure is the conventional current, which we defined as the product of the electron current and the value of the charge carriers in terms of their actual charge, right? And so this guy is the thing that, um, you know, when you measure something in amps coming out of the wall or when you look at a particular piece of electronic equipment and it tells you it requires this many amps, this is the thing that you're actually measuring. So this is a macroscopic quantity. We have tools that we can go in and we can probe and we can measure with. Um, but it turns out that in this model, it is related to the electric field that is in the wire as a result of the surface charge gradient. So what we have here is a definition of the conventional current in terms of microscopic quantities. That is, what we've done is we've connected the macroscopic world with the microscopic world. Right? The macroscopic world is things like currents, which we can measure with physical devices um, like multimeters. The micro world has this idea of the electric field, which is this thing that pushes around very, very small things like electrons. And so what this derivation does for us is it helps us understand how the thing we actually measure coming out of the wall or the thing that we measure when we're in the laboratory relates to the fundamental underlying physics that actually pushes and pulls electrons around in the wire.